And the next part, if you pass the supplementary application, is the MMI, multiple mini interview. And that is basically 12 stations uh, with two rest stations. Uh, well, two, two of the 12 are rest stations, and so you have 10 questions. You have about two minutes to read the question and then six minutes to, to answer. So the question's on a door. Um, you read the question for two minutes, think about it, knock on the door, walk in, answer the question. And within six minutes, buzzer goes off, you get out, go to the next door, and then repeat the process. So advice for that, again, is very similar to what I just said about the supplementary application. It's, again, it's communication. It's can you communicate an idea effectively? But also, the MMI is a little bit more geared towards your problem solving, I would say. It's more about... Um, can you approach a situation and consider all perspectives and see the positive and positives and negatives of a choice that you make? So um, structuring your answer and finding a kind of a skeleton that works for multiple questions is definitely something I would recommend. And doing that requires research. So look into um, YouTube and just look at videos of people answering questions or giving advice on how to answer an MMI question because and look at lots of them, but in the end, don't just take one and use it, make your own. So like, take all these little different tidbits, practice, see what works, adjust to what doesn't work and what does, and make your own unique skeleton or structure to an answer, and bring a unique perspective to it, because you're interviewing against people, you don't wanna, you don't wanna blend in, you wanna stand out. So um, finding that unique voice is definitely really important. And that just requires practice and also being evaluated. So talk to your friend. Ask them to, to find a, a list of MMI questions so you can find them easily online. And then just give, the, give it to your friend and then have them ask you a question. Think about it and then answer the question and they'll give you feedback right on the spot right there. And people who have gone through it are definitely helpful <clears throat> to give you feedback. But um, yeah. Finding that voice, finding um, your place, finding your perspective and your approach to a question is, is definitely important and it makes it easier on you because you already know this is how I'm going to approach this question before you walk in. And uh, yeah, and just I don't know, be, uh, be genuine, be a human. Don't, don't become a really professional robot because that's not who people are. Patients don't want a robot. They want someone who cares, they want a physician, they want a physician assistant, they want a healthcare practitioner who, who's advocating for them, not advocating for this drug or this medicine, you know? So it's just come across as it's like a conversation and um, yeah, be yourself. Mm -hmm. And how did you develop such great uh, communication skills? Practice, as I said, practice, practice, practice. And I think um, I was my kind of trajectory of life has kind of allowed me to practice a lot. So I, from, from grade nine, I was a drama student. Um, loved drama, loved. The aspect of drama that I liked the most was improv, improvisation. Um, and that's basically, the, the teacher gives you a, a scenario, gives you who you are and where you are, and then you go. And you just start making up a scene on the spot. And it's a hard thing to do. Because not only are you saying things, someone with you is saying something too. So you have to react to them and it's a yes and game and you're just adding together. And that requires a certain part of your brain to come up with things to say on the spot. And it's hard, but I loved it and I enjoyed it because it's a lot of humor involved, a lot of um, thinking on your feet, which is a skill. But since I liked it, it was easy to, to continue doing and I got better at it over time. And like we had improv competitions and I just, it was a great time. So that definitely helped. Um, and with that, I also having that experience and having speaking in front of people. And I also was part of like plays that were put in front of the school and I had some significant roles in the plays. And that kind of took away a little bit of the stage fright that you have of performing because Performance is everywhere. It's in an interview. You are performing. You are presenting yourself. Um, and so performance in any regard improves how you will, in, uh, how you will perform in, in other regards. So even in dance, I danced in front of people, and that, that takes a certain type of um, confidence um, to do because you are being judged. 
um, by all of these people. And in an interview, you're being judged by one or like three people or something like that, right? So being okay with being judged and being confident in your own ability is something that I had to work on. Um, and you only do that by stepping out of your comfort zone and like forcing yourself to do that. So I, I used to be in plays. I was the valedictorian in high school. And so I gave a speech at the, at the um, at a grad breakfast to, to, to run for it. And I enjoyed it. I had fun. And then I got to be valedictorian. And I also had fun doing that. Um, and then in university, I even went to, like, there was an improv club. And I would go there once in a while and just practice my improv and, and do stuff like that. I um, also was the uh, valedictorian for, for kinesiology. Um, and, again, that's probably just because I was valedictorian in high school and people knew that, so they just put me in there. But, like, I was... I'm confident in speaking in front of people, but I'm also not. There's also obviously nerves that come along with that, but I push through it and I force myself to become uncomfortable because the more I do that, the the window of uncomfortableness will shrink. And you know, my window of being comfortable in certain situations increases. And when it's this, when it gets big enough, you'll be comfortable in almost any situation, including interviews. So um, being comfortable immediately connects to communication. And also just talking to people. Like, one of my favorite things to do in life is just talk one-on-one or, like, one-on-one, like, one -on -one, like with people who are interested or who are willing to just talk about, like, why super speed is the best superpower. Like, just having a two-hour conversation about that and seeing where it goes and just being able to, like, relate to someone and um, that's something that I enjoy and that I'm naturally drawn towards. So... Um, because I kept doing that throughout my life, I've gotten better at communicating my ideas. And, um, yeah, and just being self-critical, too, uh, at times when you need to be. So if it's for an interview, you have to be, okay, where, where do my weaknesses lie and what do I need to improve on? Any suggestions for people that are introverted like myself um, <laughs> that may not be involved in drama or the arts that want to improve their communication skills? Are there other opportunities? Yeah, I think um, just even one-on-one, -on -one, like if you have a friend that you are comfortable with, talk to them and, and have a conversation that you aren't very knowledgeable about or something or, or just having, and, but like putting aside time, like we're going to have a conversation about this and just feeling a little bit uncomfortable because you don't know the topic well and just doing that. Um, also, like I said before, recording yourself and... Um, seeing what you look like as you think, as you talk, as you um, as you err, like seeing what that looks like from someone else's point of view is huge because you don't see yourself when you're talking. Um, so I'd use that and using your resources, watching YouTube, and also just getting advice from people who are super comfortable with talking and what they, what's worked for them. Um, uh, people who aren't comfortable with talking but have found comfort in it, what, what has worked for them. Um, and, yeah, I think, uh, I think growth in any sense is found in the discomfort zone. When you are not comfortable, that's when you grow. Um, whether, yeah, you're extroverted or introverted, in either sense, it, I feel like I'm slightly extroverted, but I still push myself to become uncomfortable in certain scenarios. So move out of your comfort zone in the communication sense and you'll see improvement over a long period of time but it requires work. Mm -hmm.